Hello and welcome to this demonstration. This is the, actually the final picture we want to see and the video you're going to see will show us how we get there. We start off with a, a picture which has been trimmed very carefully to an exact size uh, and a piece of paper stretched on a board and we're going to enlarge the picture to the right size. We fit it to a corner where I've already bought, drawn on borders about 10 millimeter borders right around the page but the actual position and size of the thing is worked out proportionally by uh, a diagonal measurement and you can see the point I've found there draw it across to get the complete rectangle in the same proportions as the original these are the homemade proportional dividers I made them out of 4mm perspex and you can see how you use them, you use a small end in this case turn it around to get the bigger one and we've got a point there where we make a starting point I'm working at the moment from the bottom edge of that picture but a little later on I will be drawing a datum line across around the centre of the picture to work from that, it's often easier to have a centre center datum line Continuing on, starting the very first part of the picture to give me a, a starting point. Now this is for dropping in the verticals. I'm assuming that the tower is vertical. It may actually be slightly out but uh, in, in reality, but it's going to be vertical on my painting. It's always a good idea to double check your sizes double check your measurements before you draw any lines especially with a complex subject this is a complex one um, and you're going to have to decide at some point what you want to leave out what you're going to include and what level of detail you're going to have on, on the included items again using a square to draw the horizontals where needed measuring the actual tower here, the height of the tower. I've now got a central datum line. You can't see it, it's too thin, too finely drawn, but it's there on both the main picture and on the enlargement. Check, check again. That's where we want to be. That's the top of the tower. Another check just to make absolutely sure we're right. And we are, more or less. It's very easy to go wrong. You have to be accurate with this, otherwise it doesn't work at all. Things just don't meet up. It's not a process you can rush. You need steady time uh, to, to think about it and what you're doing. and planning out carefully and if you go wrong you can see I've got a rubber there waiting to do the uh, clean up job all the time in case I make an error and errors do come I'm afraid unforced errors Obviously the main tower, which is the near the centre of the picture, uh, that will need quite a bit of detail. The second tower, a little bit further away on the other side of the harbour, doesn't need quite the same level of detail because it is further away. And these lines in the foreground are actually shadows cast by items which are off to the left that can't be seen. But the shadows are, are long in the morning sunlight and it was a brilliant morning. In fact, the sky was plain blue. Um, not something I would ever leave in a picture normally. You've got to have some detail in the sky. It doesn't need a great deal, but it needs some. Otherwise, the sky looks rather blank.
There's the flag post located. There's also a flag post on the second tower. But at that point it isn't drawn in. But you can see the picture building up quite nicely now and the scales worked out quite well using the um, proportional dividers. You can buy proportional dividers. Um, they do vary in price but they're often very expensive. You can make them quite easily. You could use even thick card but uh, they're a little bit floppy at that. I use Perspex for the simple reason I had some laid around. Aluminium would be quite nice too. Not a difficult thing to make. I'm placing some um, masking tape around there to, to give me a white border to the picture. Um, it helps to make the picture look better when you finally unveil it. Though it may not necessarily be left there when the, when, it, when the picture is framed. At this point I'm using masking tape, uh, sorry, a masking medium. And you can see it yellow on that inset there. Um, little details that want to be kept completely white can be uh, masked out with this medium. If you haven't used it before, it's, a, it's like a liquid latex. You can just simply rub it off when it's dry with your fingertip. But don't leave it on too long, by which I mean days. Don't leave it on for several days, otherwise you may find it uh, grips rather tightly and can damage the surface of the paper when you rub it off. This is my paint box. It comes with an inbuilt palette as well at the top, which is separate from this picture. But a useful box. Damping the paper now ready uh, to put the sky on. You'll notice I'm painting carefully around the items in the lower part of the picture because I don't want to get too much blue where it shouldn't be. This is Prussian blue, one of my favourite blues for sky. And this is the first layer, or first coat. Now a second one, while it's still wet. And we're going to put the clouds in with a mixture of Prussian blue and burnt umber. I'm now painting here the water line in the, in the uh, dock itself, inside the harbour. And uh, it was all in shadow, so it is quite dark. And of course the heavy shadows help to emphasise the sunlight effect on the rest of the picture when it comes together. Without shadows, you can't have lightness, you can't have sunlight. Sunlight casts shadows. And we are working within the confines of the paper. Its maximum brightness is the whiteness of the paper and its maximum dark is the blackness of the paint you put on. So you haven't got as wide a range of light as you have in reality. So you have to make some uh, accommodation for that. Here's the inner wall which is in shadow, the inner wall of the harbour. Adding a little bit more shadow to the side of the tower to give it more form. And 
and create the illusion of a three-dimensional object even though the paper's flat. And we create the illusion of depth by making the background generally paler and lighter and less colourful than the foreground. I'm now painting in the shadows which are cast from the objects on the left which can't be seen. It was quite early morning. The far side of the harbour is in shadow again. Though the extreme right end of it is light because the light is catching that. You can see that the far tower is not painted as darkly as the main one. These are medieval. The view from the top is superb on the Ben Tower. How do you get that this, this little uh, town? It's well worth a visit. It's a pretty town. The two figures are there added to, to give us a sense of scale. Their small size makes the tower look large in comparison. I'm just scraping out here with a, a point of a scalpel just to lighten up the strip between the shadows there a little bit. You'll notice I've put some stone flags to the right as well of that area to indicate the area where the stanchions are, the mooring stanchions. Little details being picked out, working right down to the particular now. You'll notice the far distance the town's been painted in a lighter paler colours and it set, therefore sets the town further back and along with the far tower the whole thing does seem to recede quite well. Although the sky is quite busy it's not overpowering anything in the picture. And there it is, a completed painting There we are. And I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you once again.